Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be going over how to draw using GIMP and as you can see right now I already have it pulled up and for time use I'm not going to, I already have it already filled out with the ink and from here I'm going to show you how to draw using GIMP if you don't have a tablet or any other way to do digital drawings you can always use GIMP, it's user friendly and it's way way easier than using Photoshop now for the first thing you're going to do when you're done you're going to have a picture that you drew either scan or take a picture of and drag it into or open as and you can find it wherever you put it and it should open the next thing you're going to do is click new layer it's down here by the top corner of the right is folded in you're going to click on it and you press ok after you and if you want to name it before or after you're just going to name it ink which I've already done this so I'm not going to use it if you ever want to go back and rename it, all you have to do is double click and type in whatever you want. Now from here, now that you got the new layer up with ink, you're going to go over to pen, paths tool or pen tool. Now from here, if you want to zoom in, you got to press control and scroll inside or forward on the mouse tool or scroll outwards on the mouse, mouse tool. Now from here, you click one time and you get a little round anchor and you click again and you get another anchor you can do this multiple times as many times as you want and all you have to do is keep clicking and drag it over top of the other anchor now from here you can drag it out and you see that you get this other anchor that you can use well these things can be moved around to curve it and there's a total of two anchors on here as you can see you can drag it you can curve this anchor like that or to or just curve it to fit the line that you're trying to go over now from here you're going to find selection for path and stroke path what you're going to pick is a stroke path the default line width is six pixels now you can either drag it down to whichever size you want that will fit the picture and then you're going to click stroke and there you go you got your first line and from here, if you ever want to go back, all you gotta click is Control Z. If you get the line messed up or anything goes wrong, all you have to do is keep pressing Control Z. It goes back for a while. And to go forward and repeat the step, you're gonna press Control Y. Here, let me. Control Y, or apparently it doesn't want to do that. Oh wait, never mind. It did do it. Now from here, I'm just gonna finish up this little sketch over here. And then I will be showing you all how to color using GIMP, which is uh, fairly easy if you use the tricks I'm going to show you. Now the reason why I'm clicking inside or in the middle of the lines is because the curves tool does not go, you know, doesn't perfectly curve all the way. That's why you're going to have to stop meet in the middle. Now, I'm just going to try to get this fast. It doesn't really look perfect, but I'm just, you know, trying to get this video out of the way for people that want to know how to, how to draw using GIMP. Now, the reason why GIMP is way, way much easier is because it's more user-friendly, and one reason would be is because the pencil on here. It's much, much more versatile, and it could do more stuff than you think it could. And Photoshop does not have a... Photoshop does not have a fairly good pen tool because it doesn't do the anchors and if you click in the middle there is no default anchor that comes with a line that you draw like right here if you curve it up this part would not show up you would have to click somewhere at the very beginning just to get it to show up and it would mess up the curves of the drawing Just let me get this done real quick and I'll be able to move on to the coloring section. Now if you want to and if you're interested in DeviantArt or you have an account on there that you use frequently you can always add me on there. I'm, I'll provide my username in the description down below. And I will be um, showing you the full the outcome of this drawing in the description below because I don't know whether or not I'm gonna have enough time to finish the entire thing unless I make many 
or just create new parts of the video. It's about the last part right here and then I'll be able to move on to the coloring and voila it's finally done. Now what you're going to do now is go down to the background, create new layer, and you're going to name it ink, or double click on it and it should pop up with the text thing. And you're going to name it color, not ink. Slipped up right there. Now here's the problem with the fuzzy tool. The fuzzy select tool selects the entire drawing, or parts of it. As you can see, it selected the entire face even though I just wanted the hair. And the reason why is because I left it open right here from the ink. It has to be enclosed. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z, go back up to ink, select the pen tool, and I'm going to close this up. And it should be able to just select the hair that I want. Now from here, I'm going to go back up to the fuzzy tool. I'm going to click on it, and it should highlight the hair. Now if you want to add another selection in, you're going to press Shift and you should get this entire layer filled out perfectly and what you're going to want to do is let me drag in another picture so I can get the colors perfectly right now just move it out of the way over here now what you can do that that, that Photoshop does not have is the color picker and from this you can get any picture any color so if there is color in the picture that you want like the brown right here all you gotta do is click and it brings up the color right here now what I'm wanting is the hair and there it is now what you're gonna do is go back down to color and since this is already selected all you gotta do is just go over it now all you gotta do is keep repeating these steps and you should be perfectly fine now I will show you a problem that I learned how to fix while using GIMP and it's gonna be right here now when you click on this it doesn't fully outline well it outlines decently but the problem is is when you go to shade over it's gonna leave little white spots let me just go back down to it now as you can see it's the line spots on here are the white spots you do not want them so what you're going to do is just go back control Z and you're going to go up here to edit actually to select and you're going to click on grow and it should pop up here with one pixel and that's how much you're going to want to grow by and bam it's fully colored over with no white spots showing and that is just about it for here and I will go over saying once I get the rest of this filled out so until then I'm gonna pause it and I will be back now that I'm back I'm gonna be going over shading which is a crucial part in drawing using digital art such as using GIMP now the first thing you're gonna do you're gonna use the ink the pen tool yet again and you're gonna click wherever you want the shadow to be like right here where the hair folds over and you're going to click up to where you want it to end and you're going to have to connect them together now here you see the shadow is going to be right through here after I get this part shaded in there we go now right here you're going to click the fully black and you're going to edit the opacity down to um, about 32 and you're gonna make your scale to uh, your circle and there you go you got the first part shaded right there and it looks perfectly fine and I shaded over some of the face during the ink part which I shouldn't have done so bear with me here now you're just gonna keep doing the same thing and you should be perfectly fine for the shading
Now I'll just keep doing the same thing and I'm gonna turn this off until I'm done and just show you the finished product over here. Now here is the finished drawing and it looks perfectly fine with the shading and everything. Now the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna merge the layers down with each other so it can, or you're gonna right click and go down to merge down. But this, what this does, it combines the layers so you can move it freely without the color. You have to click and drag the color to each other again. It just wastes a lot of time. So I'm just going to click and drag it right here. And next thing I'm going to do is go over here to filters and add a perspective shadow. Now go to light and shadow. And go down to perspective right down from drop shadow. And click on perspective. Now just click on okay and it should be perfectly fine and there's a drop shadow right there which doesn't look like uh, what I'm looking for so I'm just gonna add a drop shadow with it actually never mind I'm not gonna do that because actually I will let me just now the problem here what I didn't do I did not color in the whites behind it so I'm just gonna have to go over it and do it again There we go. Now let me just apply a drop shadow again. Now the problem here is that I also did not choose allow resizing. You do not need that on. It will resize the picture on its own, which is not needed. And bam, there we go. A drop shadow with it. And this is the finished project. Now what are you going to do for saving? You're going to go here to save as. You're going to name it as whatever. I'm just going to name my finished colored and just go down to desktop and you're going to select file extension you're going to click on the plus now to save it and edit it later you got to click XCF which saves it and it will have all the layers but if you just want if you're completely done you got to go down to JPEG image and you're going to click save and export now you got to boost up the quality to 100% and you're done save to the desktop and it's fully colored Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, just comment below. I'll try my best to answer them. Have a nice day.